Samsung has done something very special recently. They released a device, I'm not going to call it a smartphone because it's much more than that. They released a device that has the potential to revolutionize the entire mobile industry. This is this thing can be bigger than the change that the iPhone implemented in the smartphone industry in 2007. Now, of course, talking about the Galaxy Fold, a tablet that literally folds into a smaller phone. This is where the future is heading towards. We've seen this in sci-fi movies, tablets as thin as a sheet of paper that fold just like a paper in half and they turn into a much more portable smartphone. And I know that the Galaxy Fold sounds like a conceptual device, but it has actually been released on April the 26th, or at least it was supposed to be released on that date. But Samsung has now pulled the release, we don't know when it's coming out, and some are even expecting Samsung to cancel the Galaxy Fold entirely. So here's everything you need to know, the full story behind Samsung's Galaxy Fold. Okay, so in order for us to understand the Galaxy Fold, we need to go back and take a look at its development process. Back at CS in 2011, eight years ago, that's four, but eight years ago, uh, Samsung has showed us something that looked completely from the future. They showed us displays, OLED displays, that could bend, twist, and flex in any shape or form you wanted. And this was back when displays were just a flat piece of glass, so it was something that has never been done before. But the thing is, 2011 was when Samsung has showed us this tech, but this technology was actually being worked on for many years before. Now, fast forward two years later, and in 2013, Samsung released a very exciting and interesting TV ad. And in this one, they showed us a few people hanging out in a coffee shop, and one of them, a really futuristic looking guy, takes a phone out of his pocket that unfolds into a larger tablet and then folds back into a smartphone when you need something more portable. Now, this, this wasn't real. This was, of course, a concept, a 3D model. Uh, we've been doing 3D concepts here at Zen of Tech since early 2016, so for the past three years, and this was literally just that. It was a 3D model that Samsung made in order to show the world what they had in mind for the future. However, we haven't really had anything from Samsung on that since 2013. And even though we haven't heard anything in terms of foldable displays, Samsung did start focusing more and more on curved displays. In late 2013, Samsung released the Galaxy Round, uh, which was a very interesting looking phone, and this was also the world's first smartphone to have a curved display. In 2014, they released the Note 4 Edge with a single curved side, which was a very unique feature at the time and a very unique looking phone. And then shortly after, every single major Samsung phone came with a curved display. So the Galaxy S6 Edge has had curved corners, same for the S7 Edge, and then starting from the S8, Samsung implemented curved sides on all of their flagship smartphones by default. Literally the only exception being the recently released Samsung Galaxy S10e. And during this period of six years, when Samsung has kept releasing phones with curved displays, we've had a ton of leaks, rumors, and even patents on an actual foldable phone similar to the one that they showed us in that 2013 TV ad. I mean, we've made our first Samsung Galaxy X video, this is how their foldable phone was rumored to be called, back in November 2017. And I've talked about Samsung's foldable phone in many, many videos since. The Note X and pretty much everything that Samsung's patents were pointing towards. Samsung has even confirmed in late 2017 that they are working on a foldable phone and that they were having some trouble developing it and that 2019 is when we should expect to see their actual foldable phone released to the market. And 2019 it was. But instead of the Galaxy X, Samsung called it the Galaxy Fold. However, the Galaxy Fold was nothing like that concept that Samsung had showed us in 2013 in that TV ad. Uh, first off, the display of the tablet was smaller, measuring in at 7.3 inches. Second, the tablet wasn't bezel-less at all. It actually had a really, really big notch in the top right corner that houses the front cameras. And then third, when closed down, <laughs> take a look at this. Wow. Look at those bezels, those bezels. It doesn't even compare to that 2013 concept or literally to anything you would imagine such a foldable device to look like. And that's because the Galaxy Fold folds on the inside, unlike the Huawei Mate X, for example, another foldable device which hasn't been launched yet, uh, that one folds on the outside. So you get half of the tablet's display in phone mode, which makes sense. Uh, the Galaxy X folds on the inside in order to protect the display, and because of that, it has to have a secondary display on the outside. This reminds me a lot of the Nokia E90 communicator, if any of you remember that. So the Galaxy Fold looked disappointing, and considering that it started from $2,000, it's pretty clear that this 
wasn't a device for everyone. And there were many concerns about this device as well. Initially, Samsung didn't let anyone touch it. Then they released a pretty weird hands-on video with no audio, just the anyway background sound. That was really weird. Anyways, um, in this video, the seam caused by the display folding was very visible, which caused even more controversy. But by far, the biggest controversy was when reviewers started receiving the device. Yeah, we're not we're not cool enough yet to receive stuff like this. Uh, but the ones that were cool enough to receive stuff like this, um, they did say that the seam was visible and also noticeable when you touch the actual display. So you could feel that seam, which wasn't great, obviously. Uh, and they also said that the external display was indeed so small that they would just end up opening the phone anyways and using it in tablet mode most of the time. And then the big thing happened. NKBHD or Marcus Brownlee tweeted that his Galaxy Fold actually broke after removing a thin layer which appeared to be a screen protector. And then Mark Gurman tweeted that his Galaxy Fold randomly broke just after two days of getting it. He said that a screen protector that Mark has removed, which ended up breaking his phone, got slightly detached in his case, and he took it off entirely, which again, ruined the display. But then here's an interesting one. Uh, Steve Kovach from CNBC tweeted that his fold broke as well without even removing the film and the protective screen protector in, in the first place. And then Dieter Bond from The Verge had a similar issue to Steve. So apparently something got underneath the display hinge and underneath the display, which caused the entire panel to break. But why, why is this? Why does the Galaxy Fold break after just a single day of use? And how on earth can Samsung release such a thing? Well, Samsung did release a video a few days ago, actually a few weeks ago, uh, showing how the Galaxy Folds were closed and opened thousands of times by robots in order to test the durability of the hinge. But testing the Fold with robots is completely erroneous. Humans put their phones in their pockets, you know, they get dust sometimes uh, on the phone, they drop it, they fold it in different ways, they open it in different ways. And it seems like Samsung just hasn't tested that, well, at all, it seems. And the reason why the displays break is, is this. You see, OLED displays are very, very sensitive. LCD displays are sensitive too, but OLEDs are just on another level. So they need to be protected by a glass layer. But you see, the problem is that glass doesn't bend. So Samsung is using plastic. And plastic is so much softer than glasses, which means that it can easily scratch and damage the OLED display underneath it. It seems like this is the reason why Samsung has decided to have the folding display on the inside, just so that it can be protected. Now, I'm even more curious to testing out and seeing the Huawei Mate X in person, which has the same display, but on the outside. So if the Galaxy Fold breaks in a day, I wonder how many minutes the Mate X would last for. Now, in order to further protect the display, Samsung added that film, that screen protector, which some reviewers ended up removing because Samsung didn't make it clear enough that those should not be removed. Now, Samsung did say that they would be adding a clear message to consumers once the retail units are released. But the thing is that, you know, just like Mark Gurman said, dust can get inside the corners of the screen protector and it would look horrible. So you'll have to remove it yourself at some point anyways. Now, iFixit actually did an entire teardown of the Galaxy Fold and they discovered that the actual hinge is an even bigger issue. Mainly because it leaves an empty space just under the display so dirt can easily get in there and damage the extremely sensitive OLED display. Also, the Galaxy Fold has no water resistance rating, it has no dust resistance rating, so Samsung is clearly aware that this phone has an open design. So even if you don't break it by, you know, some dust underneath the display, a bit of rain will kill this thing almost instantly. However, shortly afterwards, Samsung requested iFixit to remove their teardown, so the iFixit teardown is nowhere to be found. Luckily, there's always website caching, so um, yeah, there's always that. And Samsung has requested all of their reviewers to return their Fold to Galaxy Folds back so that they can investigate them and see what happens. But Samsung was still aiming to release the Fold on the 26th of April, until recently when they decided to postpone the device, the launch, indefinitely until the issues at least are fixed. And honestly, I don't think Samsung would be able to fix or at least easily fix these issues. And they would need to re-engineer the hinge and possibly even the display. So it's, it's not looking good. It's definitely not looking good for Samsung. Okay, so in the end, I'm not bashing Samsung for failing with the Galaxy Fold. I'm really not. The Galaxy Fold is the first device, to be released at least, uh, of a big new category of devices, and that is foldable devices. But the actual reason I'm bashing Samsung for is because they're releasing and also selling this to consumers for also an outrageous price of $2,000, and considering that this thing breaks in a day, 
The Galaxy Fold isn't even in prototype form. It's far, far, far from even that. And Samsung wants to, like I said, sell this thing, albeit in very limited quantities, but still, no one should buy this device, at the moment at least, because it seems like it's far from being ready. Apple, LG, Huawei, Xiaomi, uh, they're all working on foldable devices and they have many patents on this, especially when it comes to Apple. So the future is definitely looking bright. Foldable devices will be here one day, but that day, isn't today. So I thank you for watching this very interesting, hopefully it was an interesting video. Follow me on Instagram as an tech for a free cookie and leave a comment down below telling me your thoughts on the foldable devices and especially the current state of Samsung's Galaxy Fold. Have a look at our in-depth comparison between the Galaxy Fold and the Huawei Mate X, the full comparison between the two, because the Huawei Mate X, that's the next big thing that's coming out. And in some ways it's way better than Samsung's, but in some other ways, like I said, the fact that the display folds outwards, well, it's looking quite quite risky. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.